So, you've had your GPU for a few years now. It's running hot and it's running loud. But that's okay if that's you, because in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to effectively clean your graphics card to get it running like new. Also, if you like these how-to videos, let me know by leaving a like and commenting down below, as it does massively help out the channel. And if you do like these videos, I'll keep making them for you. Like any tool out there, graphics cards need to be cleaned. This is because dust can get into all of the heat sink and it can cause reduced airflow, which increases the heat of the graphics card as heat is getting trapped in the heat sink. Also, over time, the thermal paste, which acts as a thermal conductive medium between the GPU die and the cooler, can also dry up, get cracked over time, which reduces its thermal efficiency. This can reduce your GPU's performance via thermal throttling, which is never good because you're going to be losing them frames in games. So this is why if you've got an old graphics card, you should keep on top of it, keep it clean, and your graphics card will be performing fine. Before I get into the tutorial, I have to put in this disclaimer. Only follow this tutorial if you're comfortable with taking apart your graphics card. I am not responsible if you break your graphics card, so I'm just putting that disclaimer in there right now. With that being said, if you are comfortable with it, here's what you'll need to clean out your GPU. The most important tool I think is a Phillips head screwdriver. A PH0 bit will do just fine because the screws on the back of the graphics card do have a small Phillips head on them. So a PH0 is fine here. And if you've got a multi-bit set like my iFixit kit or this one from Hoto, they are perfectly fine as well. A magnetic tip is not a necessity, but it basically is because it just makes it so much more convenient. 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol is an effective cleaning agent when it comes to electronics. It gets rid of grounding dust and it also gets rid of old thermal paste just fine and it evaporates really quickly as well which is always great for electronics. Q-tips and tissues pair well with the isopropyl alcohol at scrubbing off old thermal paste and dust. I like to use tissues to get rid of the bulk thermal paste on the GPU die and the Q-tips come in when you need finer accuracy. So the thermal paste that lies around the GPU die and grounded dust around capacitors and on the GPU shroud itself as well. Fresh thermal paste will be needed as it will need to be reapplied to the GPU. Don't bother using the old thermal paste if you take it apart. That's not the best practice if I'm honest and if it's all cracked and that your GPU is just going to be running hotter afterwards. So get some fresh thermal paste. This Arctic MX4 is relatively cheap and it's a great performer and I use it on all of my graphics cards and processors. This is what I'd recommend. And lastly, a cleaning cloth and an anti-static brush. Granted, the one that I'm using in today's video is not technically an anti-static one, but I've never had an issue with it. But if you're going to be doing this, get an anti-static one. But these are great for getting rid of loose dust and it's also great for just getting rid of just general grime and fan blades and the GPU shroud, stuff like that. Taking apart this Zotac GTX 1660 Ti is pretty easy as there are only six screws on the back of the PCB. These all mount in the cooler. But this is where your GPU may differ, especially with blower style GPUs. They are a pain to take apart. Always keep your screws in a memorable place and take pictures as you go. Here you can refer to these if you ever get stuck. When you're taking the cooler off the PCB, do be aware of the fan cable as well because people have ripped these off in the past. So just make sure you watch out for that. I'm going to start off by cleaning the GPU die and the PCB first. This is the most delicate part of cleaning a graphics card because there are so many surface mounted components. Dab a tissue with isopropyl alcohol and scrub off the old thermal paste. It should come away pretty easily and you shouldn't have that many problems here. Then get a Q-tip which is dipped in isopropyl alcohol and get rid of any excess thermal paste around the outside. Just be aware of them SMDs around the surface of the GPU because you can rip them off pretty easily. And if you rip one of them off, you're SOL. Now is a good time to see if there's any more dust on the PCB, which there will most likely be, and get rid of this as well. It's not really gonna affect performance if you leave it on there, but you've got the GPU part already, so you may as well get rid of this dust. Once you've cleaned the PCB, move that over to the side and pull over the cooling assembly. I would start off with removing the shroud and the fans off of the heatsink as it's much easier to clean these when they're apart. Once this is off, it's probably best to clean the heatsink. Here, I like to remove the old thermal paste which is on the bottom of the cooler. 
This is much easier to remove than the GPU side as there's no delicate components here so you could be as rough as you like with it. Now look at the aluminium fins on the heatsink and there should be a ton of dust here. The old blow mechanism will work just fine just by blowing it into it. This will get rid of most of the dust and if this doesn't get rid of most of it it's time to get a brush in there. A brush will make quick work of this and it will get most of it out. Take this opportunity as well to look at the thermal pads. The thermal pads on this cooler look pretty fine, there's no issue with them at all, so I'm going to be reusing these. But if you need new thermal pads, you could probably tell if they're all ripped and all just horrible. You do need to look for the right size for yours. You need to get the right millimetre in thickness, because if you get one that's too small or too big, you're going to be getting problems there. As soon as you're done cleaning the heatsink, move it over to one side and pull the shroud with the fans over. The shroud can get pretty dusty, especially with the fans as dust clings to the fan blades pretty easily. I use a brush to clean out the loose dust which is stuck to the fan blades and once that's cleared out I dab a q-tip in isopropyl alcohol and clean each blade individually. This does leave dusty smears and it doesn't look that good but this is what the cloth is for. It makes great work of getting rid of these smears and the fan blades look brand new straight from the factory. They look very clean. And the same can be applied to the shroud. Brush, scrub, wipe works wonders on this. And as this is a pretty basic shroud as well, there isn't a lot of complexity to it. There's no daughter boards with RGB or anything like that. This is just basically as basic as a GPU shroud gets. I could have done a better job of cleaning this GPU if I'm honest, but I got 90% of the way there. And it's not going to be affecting performance in any way as we've got the major parts done. Everything is clean now, or it is for the most part at least. This is the time to reassemble the GPU. Start off with putting the fan shroud back onto the cooler assembly and this is exactly the same as the way you took it off but in reverse. Also make sure you get the orientation right because you don't want your GPU fans on the wrong way around because it will just look absolutely weird in your case or even worse it might not go on properly. After this is a great time to apply thermal paste. This is where my Arctic MX4 comes in. Make sure you have enough thermal paste to cover the whole of the GPU die as all of it emits heat. You don't want any weird hot spots on your GPU. Apply about as much thermal paste as a large size pea onto the GPU die. You don't have to spread it out like I did, but you can if you want. I prefer to spread it out to make sure all of the GPU is covered. When mounting the cooler, I like to do it GPU die facing down. This makes it a ton easier to line up the holes first go and you don't get thermal paste absolutely everywhere. Also make sure you don't forget the fan cable while you're at it because it's a lot easier to do it before you screw on that PCB as well. Now screwing the screws in a crisscross pattern to evenly distribute the pressure on the GPU core and once this is done congratulations you have reassembled your graphics card. Now hopefully your GPU is reassembled correctly and here's where we will test that. You need to test your graphics card. You can either test using your favorite game or using dedicated testing software like Unigen Heaven. This is the application I personally use with any GPU test as it puts a 100% load on your graphics card. And this is great to see if anything's amiss, if there's any like, weird issues, like there's any hot spots on the GPU which are causing thermal throttling or anything like that, you'll see them here. But if you don't want to test, that's fine. You can just play a game that will put 100% load on the GPU and that will work just as well. So if your GPU works correctly, congratulations. You have fully cleaned out your graphics card and it should be performing like new. If there are any issues, repeat the steps that I went over in the video and maybe you've missed a bit of thermal paste on the GPU die and some of it's not covered. This is quite a big issue with graphics card cleaning admittedly. But if it's working fine, it's time to play some games. You've earned it after cleaning your graphics card. Or alternatively, if you're working, render out them timelines. So with this being said, if you found this video helpful, leave it a like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel if you find the information informative. And with that being said, I'm going to leave this video here.